Let's go. You're listening to KZSU, Stanford University's FM radio station, broadcasting across the Yate area on 90.1 and across the world at kzsu.org. Welcome to Brands, Beats, and Bites, hosted by Daryl D.C. Cobbin and Larry Taman. Brands, Beats, and Bites stands at the intersection of brand, tech, and culture. We bring you interesting people and insightful points of view on what's popping and not popping in marketing, tech, culture, and beyond. DC and Larry are fascinated with the stories and people behind some of the best marketing in the business. No matter how dope your product, if your marketing sucks, your company may suck too. They both serve as managing partners at marketing consultancy Brand Positioning Doctors, where they help companies large and small, tech and non-tech, build better marketers so they can build great brands. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thanks for joining us for another rendition of Brands, Beats, and Bites. Oh, thank you, LT. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, LT. All right. You all out there, uh, I know you consider yourselves to be savvy consumers of media. You use media to make connections with consumers and customers, and you have been trained to do this well. Well, today, LT, we are in the presence of someone that I'm going to refer to. She she may not want to wear this, but I'm going to give this, <laughs> this wonderful Chanel coat for her to wear, these boots. And that is a media and marketing legend. <laughs> yes, a, yes, a legend. <laughs> easy with the laughter, okay? Easy with the laughter. LT, can you do the honors? Yes, I think she uh. deserves that moniker. So listen, DC, we are super excited to have... None other than Ellen Stone in the house today, okay? Mm. So I'm going to give you a little background here. So truth be told, Ellen and I go way back. We grew up (laughs) in the same small town of Ardsley, New York, with Ellen a few years my junior. So she's not as uh, an old as weathered as me, okay? (laughs) So Ellen is yet another one on the list of people thriving in the media world from our sleepy, sleepy little town in Westchester County. Ardsley, yeah. New York. Yeah, who shares the same roots going to Ardsley schools as Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, I've heard of this person. That's right. <laughs> heard of him. And her boss, an alum of this show, none other than Mark Lazarus, who's chairman of all things television. Yes. That's right, at NBC Universal. Only difference is Ellen actually went all the way through and is a proud grad as I am of Ardsley High School. She then yeah. went on to Lehigh University, and after graduating Lehigh, she started working on Madison Avenue as an account person at big agencies such as J. Walter Thompson and Bozell, and she worked on accounts like IBM, pretty big account there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Dairy Management Milk, milk Board. So can we say milk mustaches, Ellen? Was that the time? There you go. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Not milk. Brilliant. Uh, There you go. Exactly. Uh, Lever Brothers and more. She then jumped to the client side, first as director of consumer marketing at Lifetime Network, then went to Bravo. Okay, so here, check this out. She started as VP of marketing, and she worked her way all the way up to EVP of marketing, where Bravo has become the number one cable network among female viewers, including Mm -hmm. such hits as maybe you you, might have heard of uh, the Real Housewives franchise. Is this a a show? Is this like a series here? Yeah, yeah, you might have heard of that. I right? might have heard of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so then, smartly, her boss has said, gee, we need to give Ellen some more responsibility. So Fun, first, funny, funny how that happens. Yeah, right, funny right, right, right. Yeah. So first they gave her Oxygen Network, which she successfully rebranded, then Universal Kids, and then a, another big one, E! Entertainment. So now Ellen is running the marketing of all those networks as the EVP of marketing for what they're calling NBC Universal Lifestyle Networks. And finally, before... The last piece of information I want our audience to know about Ellen is that she has been honored with numerous awards, including multi-channel news Wonder Woman, Cable Mm -hmm. Facts' most powerful women in cable, and she currently serves as the chair of the Jewish Women International Board. Ellen Stone, welcome to Brands, Beats, and Bites. Welcome to the show. Why, thank you for having me. That was quite the introduction. Wow. You earned it and deserve it. Indeed. We'll see. (laughs) Like, boys and girls, did I not say legend? Exactly. Did I not say this? Did I back you up? You backed that up. But it wasn't me. Ellen's backed up. Ellen's backed it up. (laughs) By her deeds. Okay, guys are crazy. (laughs) By her deeds. That's right. Not just her words. All right. Here we go. So, Ellen... 
because mm-hmm. you matriculate through many different worlds that uh, some folks dream about. Marketers, we find ourselves in this enviable position where the things that we do, folks are entertained by. You mm. actually work in the heart of the media and marketing space. And there are some assets that you find yourself, entertainment assets, you find yourself in and around by virtue of what you've earned. Yeah. And one of those areas happens to be award shows. You've gotten awards yourself, yourself. Mm-hmm. You've, you go to many different award shows. So we're mm-hmm. interested in that. Uh, like of all of the award shows that you, you get to attend, uh, mm-hmm. which ones do you find the most enjoyable and why? Well, funnily, I've attended about three different, four different award shows. I guess the the most fun I have when I'm not working it are the People's Choice Awards. And yes, they're on E, but it's such a fun show because you are so up close and personal with all the celebrities. Oh, nice! Okay. That I, you know, I was taking the, the requisite selfies and everything, and of course, I posted them. My friends were like, are you hanging with Jennifer Aniston? Mm. And at which point I said, yes, I am. I am absolutely <laughs> hanging. <laughs> but that's the best thing about the PCAs. They have this incredible red carpet where you get so close. Like, wow. as the audience just gets right, you know, you and the celebrities, when they get to the PCAs, they know it's the people's choice. Right. So they're a little bit more open. Oh, when interesting. I go to the, when I go to the Emmys, it's a little different. So you're on the red carpet and the audience is, is not up close and personal. So okay. you get to take the pictures, but you never get to really experience what it would be like to be their best friend. Ah, and just so you know, Jennifer Aniston and I are best friends. <laughs> okay. So you I, and Jen. I have a picture yeah. with her that's really close. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's but great. I don't have that when I go to the Emmys. Although I will say the Emmys, the gowns are amazing. Um. And, you know, I get to go see the glam bot, the e-glam bot, and that's something that is just really fun to do. So the Emmys are also really, really great. Those are my two favorites. Oh, that's awesome. So, you know, I want to just point something out, Dee, is yes. that yes. Ellen works her you-know-what off. I mean, the the she's put in buku hours. <laughs> Absolutely. And then you do get these kind of fringe benefits that you, do. you should relish yeah. and enjoy, really. You know, yeah. and that's, Agreed. that's the heart of, of the brand, especially with yeah. E, right, Ellen, you know, with your, mm-hmm. with your new responsibilities there. So that's really cool. I'm glad you shared that yeah. with us. Very glad you did. It was oh. very fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to move to the first segment reel of the show here. And okay. so we call this segment On the Clock. Oh. All right. So as you probably know, the average tenure of CMOs is not very long. And we have Mm. seen for high growth companies that the average tenure is actually 18 months. Okay. So I have heard that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Ellen. Many others have felt that. Yeah, right. So here's the here's the dichotomy we have with Ellen, which I think she can really share with our audience. Yes. You've clearly blown that number away. Right. As someone Mm -hmm. who's been running marketing for Bravo for quite some time. So with that as a backdrop. Why do you think CMO tenure is so short? Well, I think, first of all, I look at marketing as really the hub of a brand and the hub of everybody working on the brand because it's our job to define us, to create the voice for it, you know, to to get the personality right, right, and then to make sure that the brand has consistency no matter who's touching it or talking about it. So if the brand feels stagnant, then the marketing team and the head of marketing is always going to be the person who kind of bears that. Mm -hmm. And so they're the first person that says, you know, we need to be fresher. We need to be more innovative. Our Mm -hmm. numbers are down. Mm -hmm. You're not quite keeping the brand because every, I don't know if everybody knows, but brands are living things, right? Yes. And if you're not keeping the brand living and moving to, to meet whatever the consumers are looking for, then marketing has a problem. And if marketing has a problem, the head of marketing has a problem. Sure. So one of the biggest things about marketing, and it's not easy, is freshness, innovation, and the ability to pivot mm. without without diminishing who the brand is. Ooh. And that's really hard. That really the is. other way that I've survived is I don't I've never taken the CMO title. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> that's I've noticed that. You're EVP of Mark, but basically yep. you are a CMO. Let's be honest. Okay, no, no, LT, she, like she doesn't one, want it. But I am not one. She doesn't want it. Okay, okay. She doesn't want it, LT. Okay, okay. She doesn't want we'll it. We'll let you wear it then. 
it won't make you wear it. <laughs> okay, so so Ellen, can you repeat those three? I love what you just said. Can you repeat the? I didn't quite catch it. The freshness, the three items that you mentioned. So every brand has to stay fresh. They have to have innovation. They have to be innovative, and they have to be able to pivot because, as I said, a brand is a living being, a living thing. And if the brand doesn't adapt and change and meet whatever the new and latest consumer needs are, then the brand's going to stagnate and become irrelevant. Got it. So marketing is the, obviously on an entertainment brand, the people who are producing shows have to feel the same way, mm-hmm. and they always have to have great new storylines and narrative. But the marketing is the first hit to the consumer and the viewer and the audience. So we really need to make sure that their story is told in a way that's going to break through. Love so, that. Love yeah. that. Ellen, because of your experience, you've got a perspective that many who work in the marketing space don't have. Many in the marketing and branding space, Ellen, are attempting to give personality to inanimate objects. Mm-hmm. A can Mm -hmm. of Coca-Cola, a Toyota Corolla, or a uh, Beats headphones, just by way of example. Mm -hmm. You, Ellen, actually deal with people. Right. They're not inanimate objects. They are individuals, a collection of individuals that Mm -hmm. are in an asset called a show. Right. What's the difference between inanimate objects and dealing with real human beings? Dealing with real human beings. That's the difference. <laughs> uh, I love all the talent on all my shows. Oh, um, my goodness. Your nose is growing, by the way, so you might want to come back from the phone a bit there, Ellen. Yeah. There are actually a lot of similarities. So, remember, I cut my teeth on a lot a lot on the Milk right. Mustache campaign, the yeah, Got right. Milk campaign. Right, right. Yeah. And that's an inanimate object. Yes. But what the creative team did so brilliantly was they put faces around the mustache. Mm. They made it real. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. They gave it a badge. There's no doubt that they didn't give it a badge. And back, remember, the campaign, I think, started in the 80s. Oh, God, I just aged myself. But um, <laughs> it, It's okay. But, You're amongst friends yeah. and family here. <laughs> and I'm younger than Larry. That's exactly um, right. I set that up, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so remember, what we did was... We gave personality to the mustache, and we made it feel like the mustache is, has the ability to change and be a voice and all those kind of things. It was a lot harder, and you're always borrowing off the, borrowing off the equity of someone else. Yes. So on, as an entertainment, you don't have to borrow that equity, and there's so many amazing opportunities for an entertainment marketer. Number one is... Each of the shows has a distinctive personality, but they're made with the same... I'm talking about Bravo right now. Yes, right. yes, it yes. Should, it should be going for anybody, but each show has a distinctive personality, even between the housewives. Yes. Each of the housewives tells mm-hmm. a different type of anthology story about that community of women mm. that we follow as fly on the wall. And Bravo's not judgmental about it. We just tell you what it is. Now, right. we have great editors... And that's where the differential comes in between a Bravo show and someone else, the way we storytell, sure, right? Sure, So what I can do is I can take all of those slightly different nuances of personality, the different personalities of, of The Real Housewives, and I get to use that to put that together and show the viewer the bigger story of who Bravo is, mm. right? Mm. And Bravo has very, very defined brand attributes, and everybody within... <laughs> I hope everybody within the company understands who Bravo is. And that's one of my jobs. My job is to say Bravo is about giving you fun, funny drama, right? Okay. But on Bravo, you don't need to have something like an emotional hangover, you know? Ah, I'm not going to invite you into Bravo for you to, like, tense up and think about it in a tense way for days to come. Right. I want you to think about it for days to come, but I want you to be smiling, having funny discussions. Oh, yeah. So that's what Bravo is. When you go to Oxygen, it's a crime network. That's a very different sure. idea of what everybody on Oxygen needs to think about from the marketing to the research to the shows, obviously, to the press. To, so... It's not about the fact that I have people. It's about the fact that 
everybody who's touching it knows who we are. And you can do that for an inanimate object as well. Right. What, that a, sense? what a great Did I answer. answer the question? You, you answered <laughs> amazingly. It fabulously. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Look, Ellen, just to close that loop, you know, our consulting business is brand positioning doctors. And what you're really talking about is really ensuring that you have a mm-hmm. positioning that is truly emotionally connecting with your audience, mm-hmm. and it's a living, breathing thing. Mm-hmm. It's something yep. that's really dynamic and that you have to consistently, continuously and consistently evolve. And that's yep. what you've done amazingly well. So, yeah. you know, kudos to you and, and your and team. Yeah, we relaunched Bravo, I don't know, in 2003 when Queer Eye first launched, right. mm-hmm. the Bravo Queer Eye, not the other one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we kind of like broke barriers with that show. Yeah. The Bravo positioning was different than what it is today. Mm-hmm. But you can actually see the through line of where we came from, from the 2005, 6, 7, 8, mm-hmm. to where we are now in 17, 18, 19, 20. It's different because, as you said, we've had to evolve it, but we're still about creating a conversation. We're still about having personalities that aren't celebrities. We're still about a, mm. a type of humor. Back in the day, we used to call it snarky. Today, we just yeah. call it witty. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. okay. So we've changed the positioning, but we really haven't changed the essence of the brand. We've been lucky because, well, not lucky. We worked really hard for that luck. Exactly. But we've been able to keep pivoting enough while keeping our core the same to keep our audience with us. And we have, Bravo has one of the most amazing audiences. So does Oxygen. I mean, people love crime. It's Mm -hmm. crazy. Wow. They love it. But, like, Oxygen's crime viewers are so engaged that you can have fun with the brand, and it's a crime brand. But you can still have fun because you know that you have a passionate audience. And that's the other thing I love about marketing. It, it would be hard if I didn't know that the people I'm marketing to are just waiting patiently for whatever's going to come out of the brand mm. and really excited about it. Ellen, great answers, great insights. How often do you find yourself, you and your team, in a position where, as marketing people, and stewards of the brand. You don't own the brands, but you're stewards of the brand. Right. You talked about marketing being at the center. Mm-hmm. You find yourself at a place where let's take Bravo and let's take the any of the real um, housewives franchises or cities where perhaps an editor has captured something about one of the women that may feel off-brand. How often do mm. you and your team find yourselves at a place where you go, uh, uh, uh great question. Uh, good, but not on brand. You mean brand. when it's in the show? Yo, yeah, in the show, yes. Mm-hmm. You mean that, yeah, mm-hmm. someone in the show? In the show, yes. Um, content I'm talking now, not the marketing. Yeah, because you, the you control all the marketing. Yeah, the marketing. Yeah, right. I know you can do it. I'm talking about the content itself. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, not very often at all. I can think of two times in... I've been here for a really long time, 2006 to, you know, 14 years, two times where I can remember calling the head of production and saying, what just happened? Mm, and wow. and, and mm. the funny thing is the head of production said, I know it won't happen again. Wow. We are going to change it out. I even oh, have had times good. when the head of the production said, I need to tell you about a scene that happened. It got into the final cut and you're not going to like it. <laughs> and, and, was, and was that true? It was absolutely. She didn't like it. Yeah, okay. Uh, it was absolutely true. Okay. There are sometimes we're all human, and sometimes we, there are times when the marketing gets out, and my head of production sure. will call me and be like, "What was, what was that? that? What yeah. was that? Yes, and yes." And I'm the one who's supposed to be nice. more vigilant, right? And nice. I'm like, "Are you right? I'm right. good." So it happens. But when you have a tight brand, it doesn't happen very often. Oh yes. It really doesn't. Oh yes. Well said. So yeah. listen, to, I want the audience. I want to call this out to the audience. So, in Ellen's 14 years, it happened on one hand how many times... I can remember, yeah. ...that you can... Re- so... Extraordinary. That, that shows when your brand is 
really well positioned, really well defined. And one of the things we talk about a lot with our business, Ellen, is sometimes that's the case, but not everybody knows it. Yeah. And so in your organization, you mentioned that everybody, you, you, you sort of said it under your breath earlier, like, well, well everybody should know it. Everybody clearly does yes. because that's what your actions belie twice in, in, in that amount of here, time. Here. That's why we're seeing the success from Ellen's brands. And- the other thing I would say that's really special about my brands is that it is the most collaborative work situation that I've ever been at, and that mm. comes from the top. Uh, so that you heard that I'm from Laz. Ready, yes, we heard the same thing. Laz, and it goes right down to Francis Barrick, who's who's the president of Lifestyle, and then it comes to us. And I will say to you, I would never build a brand positioning without the head of content, without the head of research, without the head of press, without the head of anyone who's going to create content digital, we all have to be agreeing on it. And we all have to understand exactly what that positioning means. Because I've been, when I was at the agency, I remember we gave a positioning for a brand. I'm not going to say which one. And it was a very marketing positioning. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Marketing speak. It yeah, wasn't we, how We see them humans, often. Yes. Yeah. It wasn't how humans speak. Right. And I remember Everyone applauded it because when you speak in marketing, sometimes that sounds really good Mm -hmm. until you start to take it apart and realize, hey, I don't know what this means. And what happened was the work was falling down because the, and this was before social media, so the direct marketing folk were doing a different interpretation of the Uh, positioning than the marketing folk. So that's the other, yeah. And that's really hard because. When we said, what are you doing? They said, we're doing exactly what you said in this positioning. You told us to reach out and be in their face. And they were violently in their face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whereas we meant, we just wanted you to be playfully in their face. Right. Mm. So the interpretations also have to be really clear. Oh, that's and so as, true. And within my group, because we all come together with this positioning and we all do the, it's this and not this, it's this and not this, you know, what everybody does in marketing. Yep. And everyone has an equal, say, well, almost an equal say. I like <laughs> to have a little bit more, but everyone has a pretty equal say. Everyone knows who we are and what we're doing. And, and on Oxygen, I will say the positioning on Oxygen has come from the head of programming more so than anyone else. Mm. He, um, he really is kind of who I turn to when I think, which way would I go on this? Mm-hmm. And he is very clear. And it's like when we first were building Bravo, we had this guy, Andy Cohen, and he felt like a person that we could that could encapsulate the brand. Yes. And so we were able to kind of hoist Andy up at like ad sales meetings and be like, "Here's Bravo, it's right. Andy." Right. Right. Because Andy was the head of production, so all the shows were coming from him right. and his team. So. It's really great, and that's how collaborative. I mean, Andy and I are still collaborative. That's awesome. You know, I couldn't have done. Yes. We did a BravoCon, like a Comic Con or a South by Southwest. We call it BravoCon, and we just launched one. And I have to tell you, Andy was very much a part of talking through and brainstorming what BravoCon would be because Andy's been with us from the beginning. Mm. That's great. I'm glad you shared that with us. That's really cool. Okay, we're going to go to the PSA. Oh, I want to tell you about the. Ora Lee Smith Cancer Research Foundation, which is a new way of treating cancer that's being brought forward by one of the first African-American women to earn a PhD in physics. Dr. Hadia Nicole Green developed this cancer-killing machine that uses lasers and nanotechnology to kill cancer in mice just 15 days after a single 10-minute treatment that's being clinically trialed. Now, Dr. Green founded the Ora Lee Smith Cancer Research Foundation for their mission is to change the way that cancer is treated and reduce cancer patient suffering by providing cancer care that is accessible, affordable, and effective. You can learn more by texting Aura, O-R-A, to 71777. So just put in that's O as in orange, R as in Ralph, and A as in apple to 71777. 71777, there you have it. Aura Lee Smith Cancer Research Foundation. Check it out. Thank you very much, Charlotte. We're going to the next section now. Okay. The next section, Ellen, is called Five Questions. And here's how it works. I ask a question. Larry asks a question. We go back and forth until we reach five. Hmm. 
and I have the opportunity to go first. <laughs> All right, Ellen. So let's go back, go back in time, where you had a brand experience and the, the, the hairs on the back of your neck and on your arms stood up. You thought, mm-hmm. I am really, really into this brand right here. I may yeah. even love this brand. What was that for you? So the first brand, and this was back in my advertising days, that mm-hmm. I felt, wow, we did something incredible, was on Lipton Brisk iced tea. Wow. Really Lipton glamorous. Brisk iced tea. Okay. Lipton Brisk iced tea. It was actually a, a JV, a joint partnership between Pepsi and Lipton. So Pepsi was the distribution and Lipton was the was the tea that you put in the bottle. I mean, I heard and, I heard a word that started with a P of distribution, but I didn't hear the rest of it, but you, you can keep going. <laughs> yeah, we were on the other side of that. Yeah, we, we were on the next yeah, team. No, 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 you said something. I heard the Lipton part, but keep going. We remember, <laughs> we remember those days. Keep going. Go ahead. Remember those days? Yeah. So... We were charged with making Lipton Brisk a little bit more, people knew about it because it was a huge distribution from somebody, and so it was out there, but nobody had a personality around it. Nobody okay. really mm-hmm. thought about it, Okay. and we thought it's a beverage, so it's kind of hard to differentiate beverages. Mm-hmm. It's an iced tea. It's not even carbonated. Mm-hmm. And we needed to figure out what was going to differentiate this beverage. And that's hard because it's got to be, the taste is not, is definitely something, but it's got to be more than the taste. Everybody's got taste. That's yes, Everyone's got taste. Yes, that's, correct. That's table, table stakes. stakes. Yeah. Yep. So we decided for Lipton Brisk Ice Tea that nobody really knew about or knew of but never had, a, had an emotional connection to, we thought we were going to make it the cool iced tea. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that was the charge. And it was really simple. The other thing I found is make it simple. Mm. If you make it too convoluted, then nobody knows what, where to go and what direction to go in. I remember I was listening to somebody on Coke, and she said, you know, we're smile. And I was like, yeah, you are. That makes sense. Right. I can learn with that brief. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't close you in. It, I mean, you give you give guy rails, but yep. you know. So the basic thing was cool, and they came back with all of these really interesting creative ideas and strategies. And the final strategy was tell me if this is too much information, but the no, final strategy, fat, fat, final strategy and creative was doing these puppets. Mm. claymated puppets and again we wanted to put a personality so we did famous claymated puppets i remember that campaign. i remember this mm. yeah mm-hmm. see because you're my age so the first one was well, we were in the frank- business too so yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah and you were yeah so yeah. the first one was with frank sinatra i remember uh, yeah yeah very and cool. it was about it was about this undying thirst that you needed to quench and mm-hmm. Lift and brisk was how you quenched it, and Frank and the and the line was, ah, mm-hmm. "That's brisk, baby." I remember oh, that. Yes, totally yes. remember that. Actually, you know what? Uh, no, I don't remember who, who who's Frank Sinatra. Who's <laughs> um, it was uh, J- the guy from Saturday Night Live, J- yeah, Joe Piscopo. Yeah. Joe Piscopo, right. and he's yeah. such a nice guy, by the way. Yeah, yeah. You, you, and then you should YouTube and, it out there. That it's really a fun. It, 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 it is fun. fun it's fun. Oh yeah, it's really good. and and do the Rocky Balboa one because we did Rocky. Right. I remember. I totally remember this now. That's really. And cool. then we did the Dead Yankees. Oh my God! Which well, George. Steinbrenner wasn't dead, um, and he <laughs> he's like, I want to be in the ad. And we thought, oh, no, <laughs> can't be in the ad. And he's like, yes, I can. I'm a really good actor. So oh, we had to kind of dub him. It was kind of awkward, but that's really it all funny. worked. Well, you but know, the, you know, Larry David cut him off, you know, for the Seinfeld that uh, where they, they always had, you know, Larry David voiced Steinbrenner. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and uh, they actually had him come in. And Larry David told the story that he had to call George Steinbrenner to tell him, no, we're not using you. You're on the cutting room floor. So you you weren't alone <laughs> yeah. on that. OK. Yeah, Ellen. well, it was and it was it, unfortunately it was close in time. So it happened to him twice. It was bad. <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. Um, but we had Reggie Jackson. He came in. He did his own voice. I totally was, remember that, that campaign. That was a really cool yeah. campaign. Okay, we're going to move to the next question, Ellen. Okay? Oh, okay. So who has had or is having the most influence on your career? Oh, God. I'm really into mentor-mentee stuff. So there's been so many people that have had influence on my career. Shout I them would out. Say, 
it, when I was at Lifetime, there was this guy, Tom Hampt, and he was absolutely my mentor. He's actually passed, but he's the person rest who brought in me peace. into television yeah, in and peace. told me when I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, that I actually did know what I was doing. Because, you know, I don't know about you, but you always have self-doubt. Mm. And Everyone yeah. does. Yeah, we all, we all have yeah. it. Wait, I want to say that. Ellen, You please say that again, because you've reached <laughs> really, like, I want folks who are younger to hear that. Like, we all oh, yeah. have had those times where we're late in the office and we've and and i know dc you've had it uh, and, oh, yes. and, and look at the things you've achieved like oh, yeah. thank you and, brother. And, thank you and yes. ellen i want everybody to hear that because everyone goes through that so sorry to cut oh, you off yeah. but i think it's an important point to call out well sure i mean there's always different ways and angles and you have self-doubt and you wonder if you're on the right path and you right. wonder if you're you know is this really going to do it and so uh, Tom was this amazing ear, both when I was at Lifetime, and then even when I came over to Bravo, I continually tapped into oh, him. Oh, that's cool. And then when I got to Bravo, there's a lot, you know, my boss at the time was a fellow by the name of Jason Klarman, who was one of the most amazing marketers that I've ever worked with. Mm. He, he is so creative and dynamic in everything he does. He's high energy. He's great. So, you know... That was wonderful. So when I came to Bravo, when you have someone like that, you feel like you have this this net that will catch you just uh, in case. Yeah. And that's what I try to look for in the people that I have, you know, if my work wife or my work husband or whatever, right. is that I I want people who who won't just placate me and say, yes, Ellen, because I get that too. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. And I'm sitting yeah. here going, I know this isn't a brilliant idea. Right. That's not why I'm talking to you. Yes. I'm talking to you because I need you to help me get outside my head. So, so Ellen, um, I, I want to I ask you a follow-up right on there. Because we, we had a recent guest talk exactly about, Vasu talked exactly yeah. about that. Yeah. So mm. what do you do in that situation? Do you actually call people out and say, hey, Cut the! I really need you to tell me when my you know what doesn't stink. Tell us how you handle that. Well, I usually do it with humor, and you know. So the other day, I was in a meeting with my team, and we weren't getting anywhere with this brainstorm. And my team yeah. very rarely invites me anymore, so I was very excited to be there. <laughs> I had this way: I walk in the room, and everyone goes silent. <laughs> which is very actually intimidating for me. Right. So I was in the room. They invited me to the brainstorm, and we're brainstorming. And I know people are a little nervous and everything. So I threw out an idea that could not possibly work. And you did that on purpose, right? Yes, I did that on purpose because we weren't quite getting anywhere with all the other ideas. So I went to the opposite end and mm. gave a bad idea. Right. Mm. It, was, it was feasible, but it wasn't on brand. Got it. Okay. And you could say I was a little testing them to see what they would do. Yeah, you were. And it was complete silence. Like, it was bad <laughs> enough that just no one commented. And I said, well, what do you think? And they're like, well, and they didn't know what to do. Right. And I said, I, I need you to, should we just go away, walk away from this idea? What do you think? And my number two looked at me, and she's about to speak, and I said, not you, because I know what you think. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I oh. said, what did your team say? Oh, I like this. Mm -hmm. I like and it. One of them said to me, well, I think it was a, an interesting idea. You know, not a good idea. Interesting. 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 Oh, yeah. You're in trouble. <laughs> You're in trouble. Right. So they were all trying to, like, and then finally, my boss was like, I got to say, not my boss. My number two was like, I got to say, this is not an idea. That, why would we do this? This doesn't work. And I finally looked, you're right, it doesn't work. Why are you telling me that it's a good idea? I could hear me when I said it, it was a bad idea. Uh. So I made it funny, and I, I was like, I heard myself say it, and I heard it come out badly. And then, and after that, the team was able to really kind of let it go that, what a great that I was story. in the room. Because it, it is hard when you're... Your boss's boss is in the room. Yes. Because yes. you're nervous. Like, what if you give an idea and I'm just like, that's a terrible idea. Yes. And then they'll go off and sulk. So I started with the bad idea. And a couple people said it's interesting. No one said it was a good idea. That's how bad it was. But um, I got interesting. We should explore that. And I'm like, we should not explore that. That would be a waste of our time. Love that. So, yeah. Love that story. Love that story. It's a great story to share. We're going to go to the next one. Okay. 
First, I'm going to ask you a question. It's clear from Larry outlining your background and how you continue to get more and more responsibility. I am sure, by the way, this is a bit of a rhetorical question here. I'm uh-huh. sure, Ellen, that each time you got a new network, even though in, in your business it's a contract business, some two, two plus one, two plus two, et cetera, three plus one. Uh-huh. I'm sure that when they came to you with all of these different uh, brands that they changed your contract and conversation immediately. But, 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 but I digress. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> but but no but EVP now EVP EVP EVP, now. EVP, EVP, EVP yeah. now okay right. all right so here's the question given all of this expanded responsibility that you have gotten it's because you are good at what you do but for this question we're not even remotely interested in that we okay. want to know where Ellen effed up and, oh. and what you learned from it you know I get that question and. Effing up is not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I've always said that. So even when I talk about Bravo and how we go to market and stuff or think about ideas, the whole idea up behind Bravo was taking risks and being innovative and doing innovative things. And when you're going to do that, you're going to F up all the time. Mm-hmm. So what I have learned is don't do something brand spanking new really big the first time. Yes, just do it small so you can figure out how to scale mm. it correctly. Mm-hmm. I like the um, concept. So, mm-hmm. so in terms of the marketing, I would say I don't have an F, an F up where I'd be like, oh, my God, that taught me a lesson that I, I will, you know. Where I really think that my biggest issues were is actually with the people I manage. Oh, I don't well, know. Well, if let's hear it because I'm still I'm still waiting on the f up part of it now. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're getting there. I know I know you're arriving yeah. at a point. So go, let's I, go. There, there's a point. So so here's where I really f up. A lot of time, not a lot of time, at least twice, maybe three times, I will have someone on my team mm-hmm. who has caused waves, not good waves, okay. bad waves. Bad waves, but okay. they have done their performance in an area. So I'll have some on my – I don't want to say who it is. No, so no, we don't want names. We don't want names. We want, names. Wait, wait, we want wait, the wait. crux of the story. Yeah, right. We, 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 we want to protect the guilty. So go, go <laughs> yeah. ahead. So they were – let's just – I'm going to – they were amazing at social media. Okay. They were doing social media before, you know, right. Mark Zuckerberg. That's how old I am. Okay, guys. You know, it. they were on MySpace, and they were doing, and they were, they were an idea generation machine. Right. Oh, got it. This is all good. They're delivering. Right. They're delivering. They delivered. Yeah. They delivered. Right. I'm here. They I'm, were I'm, also incredibly obnoxious. I'm mm-hmm. hearing a conjunction happen. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. They talked. They were patronizing to people, mm. including me sometimes. Ooh. And Ooh. they, you know, but I would let that go because I would get such amazing ideas out of this person. Oh, mm-hmm. yes. And I would have complaints from the team mm-hmm. and not even just my team, but different departments. Oh, my. And I let it go because I had such good ideas. And right. I'm talking for like a year. Okay. I mean, it was bad. No, this and, is. This and is... I'd like to say it only happened once, but I actually have two examples of this. Okay. And then the Ombudsman called me. Do we all know what that is? It's the law. Law- it's the yeah. generic lawyer that you're not supposed to know who it is. Yeah, th- th- this is the person you never want to get a call from. Exactly. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, you don't want to get a and, call from this person. And I said, well, how would you know that you're the ombudsman? And they said, well, the way I find out things is that other people in your department, they can't tell me who, obviously, yeah, right. they can't my department of two people, but whatever, have actually whistleblown on that, this person. Wow. Ooh. Ellen, so this you is can imagine a good that that's an F up. <laughs> oh, that's a major <laughs> a big one. And, and you learned what? Yes. I learned that I need to, no matter what the benefit is of the mm-hmm. person, if I have a majority of people, mm-hmm. and I, it took me a little while to learn it because it happened to me twice, if I have a huge amount of people that are saying it's making a stopgap, it's making me uncomfortable. And I'm not talking me too. That's not what I'm talking right. about. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, there's, I can't do my job. I have to understand that even though I think this person's ideas are so amazing, I can figure out how to keep going and, fig- and, and keep the same level of performance without that person. You become mm, yep. almost like, I became like fearful. Mm-hmm. That I would never be able to be to the most innovative yeah. brand oh, yeah. again, yeah. right? Yeah, because she was my innovation person, right? And she left. And yeah. what happened was, without this person, I wish I hadn't said what gender she was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without this person, 
the other team members raised oh, their of game. Course. Wow. They Look said, at that. Yes. I'll bring you those ideas. Yeah. I've got them. Right. I mean, it's not that I didn't miss her and, and everything, but we didn't miss a beat. Right. And there wow. was harmony in the team, which, Look oh, my God. Look at that. Wow. So, so much better. So, Ellen, And I, then it happened to me again because I had forgotten about it after right. a few years. And okay. So, I did it again. So you're it not wasn't gonna, as bad as that time. But okay. Okay. So did you cut that? That was what I was going to Did you cut it off sooner? Did it take much a year? Sooner. There you oh, go. There so we you go. did learn. You did learn. You did oh, learn. I did. I absolutely learned, but. Good question, I, Larry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good question. It won't happen a third time. You it know, will not happen again. I want to point I out. Think- we had another guest, James Brown, who is running a startup called Encourage X, but has a deep roots in marketing career. And his biggest F up was so much similar, almost the same story as yours, yes. where he talked about in uh, a previous gig where he was running marketing and he had somebody working from, it was almost the same story. Almost the same story. And he said yeah. the next day it was like the sun came out and it hadn't right. come, yes. you know, right. and so th- this is a huge learning for everyone out there. If you're feeling this, you know what the answer is, and you and you got to cut it. You got to make it happen. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go to the next question. Okay, mm-hmm. so regarding technology and marketing, looking yeah. into the future, what do you see as areas that marketing marketers can really leverage tech versus areas that they should be leery? So you know the hottest things right now in marketing are social shoppable. So shoppable is is really big and. Mm-hmm. It's been big for a long time, but right now is the first time that people are actually sort of able to, for entertainment, to kind of see it on air and then buy it. So is that what it means? I just wanted to find that for the audience. That's what social shoppable means? See yeah, it on the so air and buy it. It's, yeah, or in, in the social feeds, or right. you can shop on air, and you can it'll take you to a site, and you can actually buy the Real Housewives dress that you just loved, or the pantsuit that you loved, yeah. or on Project Runway, you can buy the outfit that won, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Got it. So what's so appealing about that, and what's so great about that is, is A, it's monetizable, so you right. can ultimately make another revenue stream. It's still not where it needs to be, but it's getting much better. B, if you can give them a piece of the show, oh, talk about yeah. engagement in the show. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Phenomenal. Right. And C, even if you don't if they don't buy it, you're engaging them on just a superficial level mm-hmm. without interrupting the narrative of the show. Right. You're not taking that show. So I think that, and we're still working on it, but I think ultimately shoppable could be an amazing opportunity if we can get it to be more seamless and easier to utilize. That's really, really cool. And like putting shopping tags on stuff and, you know, YouTube's doing it. TikTok's doing it. Right. Oh, TikTok. You have to do TikTok. Right. I do TikTok. <laughs> that was, a, that was TikTok. one. So that was a mess up on me. Not, it actually wasn't. But at this BravoCon festival that we had, my we have a, an audience that's not as young as what I perceive the TikTok audience to be, which was teens and right. maybe early yep. 20s. So we're a little older. So my marketing team and social team came into me and said, we need to do a Real Housewives TikTok um, video and give them all these assets. And I'm like, mm. isn't that musically, which is what it used to be? I said, it's too young. No, we don't. We shouldn't do it. And then my, my number two came in and she said, we, we should do it. And I said, I don't think so because it's the wrong audience. And she said, it's not the wrong audience. And she proved it out. And I said, all right, go ahead. Because it, the other thing as a, as a, as a leader, you'd have to let people do things sure. because even if you're a hundred percent sure they're going to fail, you need them to see how to, to rebound from failure. Needless to say, it was 3 million views in three hours. So wow. yeah, I was wrong. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Boy, was I wrong. I am just, uh, my mouth is agape at this answer to the technology portion of it. And uh, here's the reason why, uh, Ellen and LT. Mm -hmm. By and large, when one consumes Bravo programs like Real Housewives, they -hmm. are consuming it virtually. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity for them to consume it tactically. So to, yep. you know, tacti- they make the show and the assets tactile. And tangibly. And tangibly, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Both. So mm-hmm. uh, that that's great. All right. Yeah. Final question of the five, Ellen. You're almost home oh. on these five. You're almost wow. home. All right. I hope I'm doing okay. You're, You're doing, doing great. Right. You're doing great. You're doing great, Ellen. You're doing great. What are you most proud of? 
Oh, gosh, I have to say, I've been around a long time. I'm proud of a lot of things. I'm really proud of, of the teams that I've, I've built. They continue to surprise me with their creativity and their ideas. I'm really proud of moving into the experiential space, both on Oxygen. We did Oxygen's CrimeCon. We, we sponsored CrimeCon. And then Bravo did its first BravoCon, which was a three-day experiential. Wow. Crazy, crazy cool. weekend of over 10,000 people coming in, cool. and we kept it small for the first one with almost 90 Bravo celebrities. I'm sorry, Bravo talent. We call them Bravo celebrities. Bravo celebrities. Bra- Bra- Bravo celebrities. Okay. Bravo celebrities who, who got, got a lot of sub brands happening here well, now. That's Ellen. a brand. Oh, sub brands. That's a branding well, you know, thing. Our, oh, that's our awesome. Our audience, our crazy audience, who we love, are called our Bravo holics. Bravo holics. Wow. Oh, look at that! Wow. Look at that! <laughs> I did tell you I was in marketing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we kind of knew that. <laughs> and then I'm also, I'm proud of a lot of things. I'm proud when Oxygen was having a really hard time, we were going to millennial girls because we thought there was this big white space. And then it kind of dawned on us that there was a white space with millennial women for a reason. And we pivoted to crime and we were able to, like, seamlessly get from a millennial women's network into a women's crime network without losing momentum and actually gaining speed. And I'm pretty proud of that because that's a big pivot. I don't know. We we launched Dirty John on Bravo, a scripted show on a reality network, and it was and one it was of the top huge five success. yeah. successes yeah. of the year. Yeah, I, I have to say, I'm, I, I have a team. So I'm most proud of my teams because they are brilliant right. and they're really good. That's awesome. That's a great answer. Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, so, it is. So, okay, Ellen. So we're going to go to our next section here that we okay. love this section. We call it What's Poppin'? What's Poppin', D? What's Poppin'? So, <laughs> okay. Ellen, this is where we shout down, shout up, release some pet peeves, some different mm. things that we have uh, to get off our chest. And uh, DC and I each take one, and you're welcome to do the same. So I'm okay. going to start off. Okay. Do it, LT. What right. you got? What you got? Here's what I got. So the retail business. Mm-hmm. Just recently, Macy's uh, had a big announcement where they're shuttering a bunch of stores. Mm-hmm. Nordstrom, uh, obviously competitor to Macy's, is evolving what they're doing with an interesting play called See You Tomorrow, which is secondhand merchandise from their returns. And we know Nordstrom does such oh, an amazing oh, job sure do. with yeah. returns, right? Think about that. Wow. The, the, oh, yeah. Isn't that a cool idea? That's a cool uh-huh. name and idea. It is. Yeah. It's totally yeah. cool. Okay. So uh, just use, just thinking of them. And again, we can think of the, the RIPs, Toys R Us and folks who, you know, yeah. Sports Authority and people like that. The retail business is never been the same since Amazon and Amazon continues to do such an amazing job mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. with what they do. Okay, so my what's popping is you're in a business like that. How do you evolve forward? What do you do? Mm. And where I'm coming from is that it always goes back to a lot of the truths that Ellen talked about. And a lot of what we talk about in our brand positioning doctor's business is really emanating from the consumer, right? People still do want to shop. But it's yeah. going to be a whole lot of different than it was here in, in than it was in 2010 at the advent of the iPhones, right? Versus right. 2020 and beyond. So my what's popping is what Ellen was saying before is you better evolve your positioning and pivot forward or you're going to die. And Macy's, right. if I may say so, I don't think this is the same for Nordstrom. Macy's is on the verge they are, yeah. They're on the verge. It's a venerable brand. I, I grew up in New York with Macy's and, you know, the Thanksgiving mm-hmm. Day Parade, but they're on the verge. And if they don't figure it out soon, at the end of this decade, they might not be any longer. That's my what's popping. What do you guys yeah. think? Well, I want to hear from Ellen because when you said the question, what do you do? I heard just an audible gasp of some sort from Ellen. Yeah. So, Ellen, your thoughts? Well, I have to say that retail industry has a similar parallel path to the entertainment industry. While the retail had Amazon, we had this little company called Netflix. Yes, come in. right. And Very so similar. I think what you do is you strategically pivot to your point. So Netflix came in and you need to understand how big the audience is. 
and yeah. what they want. So we know that they need a streaming service, and that we know they like to binge view, and they like to make their own schedules and all that kind of stuff. But as importantly, we need to make money off the content, or we can't off, we can't actually make the content. Right. So you see what Disney did, and I think they did it really well. Disney did has Disney Plus. Yes. They merged, and they got FX, and they have Hulu. So they now have all these different audience segments. Yep. So again, they figured out what the audiences were, and they figured out how to play to each of the audience. And then NBCU just did um, Peacock, right? Which is mm-hmm. <laughs> please talk means, about. No, please talk about that, Ellen, because that's that's your version. When is that being that's, launched, and 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 how is that working? So I think there's there's a soft launch this, this spring, and then um, a hard launch with the Olympics because that's a huge platform for us. And we just had, Steve Burke just talked about it a couple of weeks ago at our Investors Day, and it's going to be amazing. And what it does is figure out the monetization model. So Mm -hmm. there will be AVOD and SVOD and FreeVOD. Do you have to explain all those? Please explain. Please please explain. Please please tell tell the audience what those acronyms are. Video on demand, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So SVOD is what in Netflix is that subscription video on demand. Right. AVOD is more like what Hulu does, Mm -hmm. offers, which is advertising Advertising. video on demand. Mm -hmm. It's not as much advertising as what you'll get on the linear, but it's still advertising. Right. And then there's free, which means is like, gosh, I don't think anybody does it anymore. But uh, But those are the main ones. Those are the main ones. Yeah. Yeah. So whereas Disney Plus is SVOD and Netflix is SVOD, we are looking at the YouTube and the Hulu models, mm. and we're going to do a combination of both, which I think was really smart. That is smart. Okay. I think what we did was we waited a second, a right. tick, because we obviously weren't a first mover. That right. was Netflix and then right. Amazon. And we thought, let's combine the best of all worlds sure. and really understand what the audience is willing to do to get mm-hmm. great content. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what we're doing. So to your point, we pivoted. Yep. And all of us brands are going to help out Peacock because that could be the biggest platform for us to pivot to. Like, uh, mm, interesting. Yeah. I like yeah. the corollary that Ellen, uh, Larry is making from retail, your example with mm-hmm. Macy's and Nordstrom's and then the, um, the media space. Yeah. And I think there's a lesson for the audience and what Ellen has already outlined. And that's this, they are evolving from, Uh, shows as something to just be consumed by visual and by hearing to shows that can now, to your word, uh, Larry, to be tangibly experienced. Mm -hmm. So Ellen is creating now and the team, they are creating experiences so that the consumers can immerse themselves in the brand, right? uh, like literally in the brand. And I believe that's the difference between retail of today and retail of yesterday and tomorrow. If there isn't some experience that one can immerse Mm -hmm. themselves in, then give me, uh, give me my, give me my phone. I'll buy it there. But if you give me something worthwhile to experience, then I'm going to go in. Well, and and we talk call something called the brand activation wheel, Ellen, yeah. which mm-hmm. are the touch points that all the touch points that a brand has. And what I love about what you're doing in, in in the technology question that you even talk about, you know, is that sociable shoppable. That's a mouthful, boy. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's, that's mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> but I love that because yeah, you're generating revenue, but more importantly, from a brand standpoint, you're another way for you to establish okay. and continue the emotional connection that you have. With people, which yeah. is a wonderful thing. Yes, I will say, DC, you took my my what's popping because oh, mine oh, was oh. all going to be about experience. I'm, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Ellen. I'm, I'm we're, sorry. We're, 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 we're we're talking about it already. Yeah, so we, it's, we still it's we still want to hear it. Yeah. We, we still, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to give my I'm going to give mine now, and then uh, Ellen, we do want you to share yours. We yeah. do want you to share yours. All right. Well, you shared mine. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I'll share the, my next one, and you 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 can okay. you can hop on or or not. It's it's, it's up to you. All right. So okay. I'm I'm in a retail space as well. By the way, Ellen. You don't know this, but uh, Larry and I, we don't know what the other one's going to do on this What's Popping. So it's truly organic when we're chatting about it. So mine happens to also be in the retail space, but it's in the online retail space. So just last night, early this morning, wee hours of the morning, I'm looking at an order that I placed the day before, online order, Mm -hmm. at a place called Mr. Porter. 
<laughs> All right, Mr. Porter. I didn't know it was a UK company, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. And uh, I'm looking at my order because I want to see when it's going to land. And then uh, I click on the uh, on the link. It takes me to the site. And I'm looking there, and then Ellen and LT shade it out. It says canceled. Huh? What? I'm like, I'm like, why is it canceled? Did you get an email or text or something? I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. It just said canceled. So I'm wow. like, okay, what's up? So I, I like the site, so I made another order. And so I'm looking at both of them. I so, said, well, let me check the other one. And it said canceled as well again, Larry. No, no warning, no nothing. Wow. So I'm, I'm wondering, like, what's happening here? Did I so mess I, up? Yeah, I go, I go get the order number. I then say, I'm going to go online to this customer service, do some chatting. So they did the online chat with the customer service right. associate. Oh, I then yeah. go in there, and the guy says, yes, yes, there's a reason for that. Uh, your bank did not authorize the transaction. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh. What do you mean? So then I get off the chat. I get off the chat with the guy. I then go on. I look at my and I'm like, "Hey, wait a minute! They got my money." Okay. It's just, just, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. So they your money went out of your bank, but they're the, saying yeah, it, they're, this, this, they're saying the bank did not authorize the transaction, and my money's oh. gone. Okay. What? <laughs> my money's gone. So now, now, okay. And I, I don't remember what the, what the movie was. Uh, I think it might be Django Un, uh, Django Unchained, where Leo says, uh, "At first you had my interest, now you've got my attention. They had my attention. <laughs> right. Okay, they had my attention. So now, That's so crazy. So it is. Yeah. So I, so then I'm like, well, maybe something's up. So I. I call the bank. I call the bank, and the bank says, "Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that money's going. <laughs> Not going. Yeah, it's yeah, going. That money's gone. And unless they send, it's gone. Unless they send a cancel. And mm-hmm. I said, okay, let me give them a call back. So I give them. I give. I give Mr. Mr. Po- Porter. Mr. Potter. <laughs> I give them a call back. So I'm talking to the guy. His name is Charles. This is where I find out he's from mm-hmm. the UK. So I'm going through it, and he says, after a little conversation, I explain it to him. He then says, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I see what happened. So what, what what happened? He said, "Is your address? Is this product going to a locker?" <laughs> okay. I'm like, it's not like going to a locker, dude. To my, business, my, my business address. I got a place where they, you know, they sign. I got this. It, it it looks like it's going to a locker, and so he says, "So they manually canceled my orders." Wow. Oh my god. Okay, so now I'm like, okay, yo, dude. Okay, and like, they didn't it, tell it, you. They, they, I said, you didn't. It, I said, uh, I said, hold on a second. Why wasn't there some warning to yeah. let me know that yeah. my address was not going to be oh, good? Oh, good point, right. Yeah. He, says, yeah. uh, he says, you know, for your protection. <laughs> we, we, I'm like, yo, dude, I know. I said, I, said, I said, tell you what, man. Tell me where on the site it tells me that you can cancel my order like this. Why don't you tell me that, all right? And I put the stopwatch on him. Larry, on your I, iPhone? Yeah. I put the stopwatch on him. Okay. It gets to about three and a half minutes. I said, okay, Charles, we can stop now. Okay. <laughs> okay. We can stop now. All right. Uh, so, and, and, then, and then when I wanted to get my stuff, they didn't have my sizes anymore. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. Now, now this, this story ends well. I know it's, it's getting a bit long. It ends well in that Charles came through for me, went through some channels, found some things for me, gave me a, a discount. So shout uh, Mr. Mr. Potter, <laughs> Mr. Potter, and uh, and Charles. But the point here is that I had a really funky point of view of that wow. brand after oh, that yeah. experience. Oh, funky, yeah. funky, funky. And Ellen, I'll, I'll let you come in in a minute. But we we have the the point of view, just like when you're working out, you're building muscle or you're losing muscle. And with right. brands, when when you are actually in that activation mode with the brand, you're either enhancing that brand relationship yes. or detracting from it. So, D, you That's were detracting it. big time. And you maybe de- they made it better at the end, but, right? It, they they yeah. were, and I'll just say this, and then I want to hear from uh, Ellen as well. Thank you for that, uh, Larry. My mom has a quote, and you guys have heard quotes from my mom before. Does the audio match the video? Mm-hmm. It's back right. in the day. And the audio sounded really good to me. But the video was a little bit shaky. But they recovered. They recovered. So, Ellen, your view on on my what's popping. Well, first of all, was that an English accent that you were doing? (laughs) Okay. Just just curious. In other words, you ain't going on Bravo. That's what she said. So so here's the deal. No, Uh, actually, we'd love you on Bravo. Okay, okay. So Um, this this, this podcast is ending right now. (laughs) Right now. Okay. Ryan, our engineer... Cut Ellen <laughs> off right now. Okay. All right. No. I've overrun my welcome. Oh, yes. my God. Hey, go ahead, Ellen. Um, go ahead. I would, I would, yeah. You, no, you're right. And here, here's the thing. We all make mistakes. You know, I've had 
we've had things on our side. I remember we had a Top Chef finale, which is one of the shows on Bravo, and the website went down during the finale. Oh, my man. You want to talk about me not understanding Facebook at the time? Ooh. So I, a friend of mine Ooh. texted me on, on Facebook and said, what's going on with Top Chef? And I wrote back, I know, our, our stupid... <laughs> Tech team can't seem to get it up. At which point, <laughs> on Facebook. the head of digital texts me and says, You're on the wall. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Oh, Ellen. <laughs> Ellen. And I'm like, What's the wall? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ellen. Oh, that was an F up if you really No, that's another good F up. That's another good F up. Another good F up. Oh, I'm my telling you, I have tons of them. Oh, that's, thanks for sharing that, Ellen. To everybody. That's, that's awesome. classic. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. So anyway, the point of that story was not how bad I don't know social media in the day, but, you know, our site went down. And you want to talk about the audio not meeting the the video video, or the video not meeting the audio. That was a pretty awful experience. And what you need to do from that and what they needed to do, and maybe they did, was, yes, Mr. Palta was wonderful in getting you a discount. But what happened after that? (laughs) Oh. Did they change did they change the site? Have they reached out to you yeah. a couple great of point. times? Great point. Great question. Oh, what, what a great point. That? You have to be able to, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to have those moments. Absolutely. What you need to do is prepare for them as best you can and then make good on your there personality you and your, your brand in the way that your brand needs to make good on it. And it doesn't sound like Mr. Palta did that. <laughs> All right, I don't know that the accent either. Listen, listen. Yours say, is better than D's. Wait, 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 wait a minute, LT. She ain't getting no Academy Award either. <laughs> okay, okay, hold on. Hold on a second here. Well, she's an attendee. Oh, yes, she's an attendee. My, my okay. boss is English, and there are times when I'll, you know how you just take on people's accents? Yes. I just yes. on her accents, and she's in the room, and she'll be like, are you actually trying to mimic <laughs> no, sort of. No. Oh my goodness! But I don't think so, Ellen. That's oh, great. that's that's funny. That's great. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. So, so, so that's what I would say about that that uh, situation. Thank that you, Ellen. So, marketers need to be prepared for stuff like that and come back strong. Yes, agreed. So, Ellen, do you want to get into your what's popping, or should we? Well, uh, did did I, we already cover I, it? I think we covered it. It's really okay. the the growth of ex- and the, the importance of experiential, and that the way to get to a brand, get a brand really engagement is now you have to do more and more experiential. You have to touch the consumers one on one, and where that used to be problematic because you couldn't scale it. Right. You need to have the social media so the influencers yes. come in. But it's not like the old days when you would give it to the influencers and you never there was no result that really was effective to you. Mm -hmm. But now people are just using influencers so much smarter than they used it in the past. So we created something called, you're going to love this, Certified Bravoholics. (laughs) Ah, That's great. Right. And these are, I love that. We have reached out to people, fans, as well as real influencers who love the brand and have a a definite following. And what we'll do once, maybe now, maybe twice a year, because it was so successful, is we'll bring them in and they'll be able to touch our content. We're going to do it for Oxygen as well, where we have um, talent come in. We'll have the producers of the show. Oh, yeah. And they get to ask any question they want. And the people who are really into that, they can't get enough. Like, and so they have to have a, awesome. a certain number of followers mm-hmm. so that we know that there'll be a, a scale that's real. Right. Because we used to have big scales, but then they wouldn't be as intimate with the content. So who cared because their audience couldn't care less about us. Now we know that the people following them, because we know they, they're, they're certified Bravoholics, we know the people following them are also probably certified Bravoholics. Right. And they have the ability to scale the message. Smart. So that's a experiential tactic that we use in that regard. And then we do things like the Vanderpump Rules, which is a show about a group of friends who all worked at Lisa Vanderpump's restaurant, Sir. Mm -hmm. And it's a bar. And so we did a Vanderpump bar crawl. (laughs) And we were testing out the idea. So we did three bars in in New York City in a one block radius. And we thought, let's try for 600 people because that will be capacity and beyond. We got about 2,000, 3,000 people show up. Wow. So that was a pivot. What do you do with 2,400 people who aren't going to get into the bar, right? <laughs> right? Because yeah. then you have to be able to have a better experience than Mr. Potter. That's right. Didn't even try the accent. So what we did was we brought the Bravo celebrities out for selfies. 
for shock and awe selfie moments. And that made their night and everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. We had trivia with Bravo Swag. Oh, and we we wonderful. did Vanderpump trivia contests all up and down the lot lines, and we let them know they probably weren't going to get in, and right. that they should leave now because we don't want to waste their times. No one left. Oh, of course not. That's yeah. wonderful. Of course not. That's a great story. It really is. That's a great story to to get to the show calls, D. It, oh. No. We're, we're there. <laughs> Ellen, seriously. We're there. You wow. Were, this was awesome. Oh, yeah. This was awesome. <laughs> this was this was fabulous. I love the stories that you told. It, it, except for the insult about my... About uh, your f- British accent. About your resident. phenomenal it, English it, accent. Yeah, 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 except yeah. for that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. go ahead. Okay. Well, All right, you so know, practice makes perfect. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, so we're coming to the show close, Ellen. And the show close is where we... DC and I each sort of posit our learnings from this wonderful conversation we've had with you. You've spun so many, some great things for the audience to really uh, mow and think about and apply. So I'm going to start, okay? Thanks, Anthony. And while there were a lot, I'm going to keep mine to two that I really want to accentuate. Okay. Okay. So Ellen talked about define your brand and make sure everyone knows it. Yes. And we... In our practice, a lot of folks, quite honestly, don't even know how to define their brand. Some do like Ellen, but then if, as we talked about, not everybody knows it, it doesn't matter. Because if you've defined your brand, but the folks internally don't know it, then things are going to be off-brand. So it's incredibly important to both, yes, define the brand, positioning the brand in a way that's emotionally connecting with the target audience, whether in B2C, it's, of course, the consumer, and B2B, it's the the defined target audience. But you got to make sure everyone knows it. So two steps. So my second one is... That when you're in an elite, thanks, thanks, D. So when you're in a leadership position like Ellen's been, you got to set up a situation like she's done where you are fostering real feedback. Yes. Like keeping it real, right? Mm -hmm. Got to, you got to make sure that people will speak up. And when you see that they're not, you do what Ellen did in that great story that she shared. And so it's really important and really vital. And I would, I would say, and I would love to hear what both of you have to say on this, you got to do that even when you're in the mid-level, when you're sort yeah. of managing up and down. You want to make sure that you're fostering that throughout. So it's not a muscle that you're just going to develop when you do get at the highest level. You got to continue to do that throughout. So those are my two. Okay. All right, now, LT, I usually have three, as you know. Mm-hmm. Those are two of my three. <laughs> Okay, those are two of my three. So I'm going someplace else. Okay. I'm going someplace else now. But I love those two. Ellen talked about the fact that uh, with Bravo, they edit but don't judge. Mm. I thought that was interesting. Mm-hmm. And what I'm going to offer to our uh, listening audience here is that do you and does your brand know when it's right to edit versus judge? Mm. That's one. All right, number two for me is, uh, Ellen, you talked about having self-doubt. And mm-hmm. then you also said that uh, there was someone there to catch you. And my question to our audience is, when you have self-doubt, who's there to catch you? Mm. And then finally, you talked about the mistakes. And we talked about on um, this question of the F-ups and the failures. And you, and you learn from your failures. You gave a couple of really, really good ones. <laughs> and here's what I would offer to you all, boys and girls, is that uh, you've heard this thing about, is the juice worth the squeeze? Ellen waited a year to make a move on showing someone the door. Mm-hmm. And we believe this. Bad situations are not like wine. They don't get better with time. Mm -hmm. They get worse. Yep. So make certain that you understand that before you start to have this juice of this spoiled piece of fruit Mm -hmm. start to develop, you need to chop that off the tree early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Here, here. So, Ellen— What have you, if anything, have you taken from this wonderful conversation you've had with us? Well, first of all, you guys are amazing at drawing information from me. <laughs> Didn't expect that. But, um, you know, 
I think you guys are really great at being able to take in a lot of information and really hone down to the most important elements ah, and then restate you. them in a way that's very easy to understand because not a lot of people can do that in a quick time frame. So that was amazing, I thought. Thank you. Thank you very um, much. You also, you know how I was saying sometimes marketing speak is so hard and off-putting. You're wonderful at bringing the big ideas outside of marketing speak so that they're smart ideas. You know they're smart, but you know that they're approachable ideas. And that's really important to me. Oh, thank um, you. That's huge. You're yeah. right. Thank you, Ellen. That is important. And clearly you've done it. Clearly. <laughs> Yeah. But I, I I have to make more of a concerted effort to do it. You guys just, you have an ease, and it's well, thank great. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. We're smiling. Yes, we are. Yeah, you have a good rapport, you guys. <laughs> yeah. well, we, we do go way back. We so do. We do. So, Ellen, I can't believe this is over. We can't thank you enough. Thank you, Ellen. We're going to have to go into the show close here, the real close. So thanks for everyone listening to Brands, Beats, and Bites, recorded here on the farm at Stanford University Studios in Stanford, California, and a production of KZSU, Stanford, 90.1 FM radio, and worldwide at kzsu.org. Today, the recording engineer is the fabulous Ryan Roberts. The executive producers are Jeff Shirley, Daryl D.C. Cobbin, myself, Larry Taman, Joseph Anderson, and the podfather himself, Tom the, DiOro. The podfather. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are listening to us via podcast, please rate and review us. And if you do like the show, please subscribe and share. We hope you enjoyed our show today, and we look forward to next time where we will have more insightful and enlightening talk about marketing with another great business leader as our guest. If you wish to contact us, our email is brandsbeatsbytes at kzsu.stanford.edu. Again, that is brands, B-R-A-N-D-S, beats, B-E-A-T-S, bytes, B, Y as in yellow, T-E-S, at kzsu.stanford.edu.